we've got all our window wells cut, welded. Uh, I haven't ground down the top welds just yet and kind of finished them up, but what I'm gonna do, lay out the expanded metal so that I can cut it up. That's just a really quick thing, and I'll get to use my new toy, which you'll see. Just real quick, we're gonna do how to measure your own window wells. I know that I briefly mentioned it, but let's go over the steps that you would need to do to measure, especially a curved window well. A square one, hopefully we could figure that one out, but if you have curved window wells and you wanna fabricate your own, um, a couple things you're gonna need. You definitely need the overall width, all right, and what's called the depth. Right, you need to know how far out and how far wide. Okay, once you figure out those, and again, write all this down as you're out there measuring your own window wells. Uh, so you're gonna measure this one out, see how far back it goes, how wide it goes, okay? Then you're gonna wanna pull at least two, if not three dimensions across the corner. I would uh, figure out, you know, about where my center is. You know, this is 52, so we're at 26, right? So 26 is center. And you could use a square or however you want. You're gonna find middle on your front. And you're gonna straddle as far as you can before it starts to curve. And we're gonna say that's 15 inches on this one. So that's seven and a half uh, on the center to either side. Okay, from there, I would go um, a certain distance and I've got a five inch rule here. So we could go about five inches or so 
I'm gonna go, let's do six. Six inches. And hopefully right about there is where we're gonna start curve around. We're gonna do the same thing on this side, get about six inches. And it depends on the size of your window well, you know, how big it is, how small it is. But you would make this mark, you can grab a dry erase marker or something like that um, so it can wipe off. Uh, or, you know, just take really good, uh, put some tape down. You can put some painter's tape down on your window well. And then you can make these measurements out. So make them equally spacing from center. So I've got my 15 inch straight piece and I'm gonna go, and since I'm backwards, I'm gonna go this way, but I'm gonna pull from that dimension to the corner, 53. This dimension to the corner, 54 and a half. That dimension to the corner, and 55, right? And that helps you figure out the, the spacing on this side. And then also on this way, right? You're gonna do the same thing. Now, this is where I ran into a hiccup on this one is it's asymmetrical. And so I assumed it was gonna be equal left side, right side, but because it is off, you're gonna to need to take into consideration that your window wells might not be completely symmetrical. So yeah, this one is 50 and a quarter, 53, 54 and a half, and 55. So they're pretty, that's pretty close. Um, and that was a guesstimation. Uh, what you're gonna do at that point is once you figure out your width and your depth, you really want to give yourself a little bit more cushion, right? Because if we make it exactly fit, um, it might be really snug. It might not sit very well. So you really want to, that's why I like using the two inch angle iron that we used on this project is because it allows for some leeway. Most window wells are only about an inch wide. And so it gives you some movement. Um, so that being said, once you figure out your overall width and depth, um, I add an inch both sides, so it's a two inch overall growth and a one inch growth that way. Um, and so each of those corner dimensions that I pulled, I would add an inch onto, and that would help me at least sketch it out on paper using a rule, uh, a scale of some sort. I could go into CAD if I wanted to, and I could start kind of figuring out what that form is. Now, I could also uh, use some pieces of scrap that I've got floating around. I like having longer pieces, and I could just kind of even bring them to my window well if that was what I was doing, and I could kind of lay them out and on that kind of intersection pattern, lay them all down, scoot them all out to where they fit around, and then I would start taking the dimensions. So if I had... Uh, a couple pieces of tubing. I would lay them on the side and then I would measure out to those pieces of tube, figure out again how long they needed to be. If I was using angle iron already, I could easily mark it where it needed to be cut and bent. Um, and then you could get that perimeter. Once the perimeter is set and it fits on there good, you're just slapping in a, a, a strong back on the rear end of it and then usually two supports down the, the middle offset. You could possibly get away with one support, um, but you want to be safe than sorry. One of the other things that you might go into consideration um, is if you want to, if it is an egress, do you need to put a hatch in there, right? That takes a little bit extra uh, thinking and ingenuity and kind of problem solving to get a, a door that opens up and closes. Uh, not a huge problem, but you need to think about how big their spacing is going to be and to get through there. You want more space than not space. You know, on the last set of window wells I used, you saw me use a zip disc, a cutoff wheel, uh, and I was able to get through there. And this time around, I decided to try and use my plasma cutter, and uh, it works out pretty quick. I don't know if one's necessarily faster than the other, because after you plasma cut, you really do need to come in and clean off the edge that you cut because it has an oxide layer 
on there and if you try welding over it, it can cause porosity. I noticed a couple of mine have a little bit of a bubble on one or two uh, that I didn't clean as well as others. And so it's an extra step. So on a zip wheel, you know, put up my guide, zip, 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 I'm done. Uh, I don't really need to deburr anything or clean anything, but on a plasma cutter, I might go faster, but then I got to come back with a, a flap disc or a grinding wheel and clean those edges back up. After you know your width and your depth, you can pull three different points off of that. Make sure that they are on the outside. You could use two by fours even just to get the overall outside shape. The cardboard works really well, and when you're the one pulling the dimensions, it makes sense. But if you're going out to someone's house and you don't want to keep going back to their house and um, pulling dimensions, kind of acting a fool, then you're going to want to write down everything. It's better to take too many dimensions and not need them than to all of a sudden realize, crap, I need to go back to that house. I need to measure what this distance is so I can figure this out. You know, you may want to even just start taking straight dimensions back. Again, if you have a square and you can make sure you're pulling a vertical dimension out, you can even pull what the rise and run is as you come around. The main thing is you want to try and make sure you're pulling from the same increment across so that you can help yourself with the angles down here on the other side. There's a lot of built-in apps for your phone that'll help you calculate rise and run, and then also figure out, uh, I mean, using Pythagorean's theorem, you can figure out the hypotenuse of each rise and run, but it doesn't always give you the angle. You gotta uh, go back in and do a little more trig to do that. But there's a lot of apps that you can get on your phone that are free, and you can type in those dimensions and it'll give you the angles. And once you know the angles, then you know how, how much of a pie cut to make in each of those uh, spots to sandwich it all together. Uh, so there you go. Go ahead and make yourself some window well covers. Now window well covers are a really popular one. Almost everybody asks, hey, do you do this? How much do you charge to do a window well cover? I need a window well cover. Um, you can make a lot of good money uh, making window well covers. Now at first you might be a little slow. In my case, I'm figuring things out. Uh, fabrication is no new thing, but building a new object uh, always gives itself a little bit of trials. So as you start building window well covers, um, you can go through and maybe it takes you, you know, half a day to do one, six hours. But as you get faster and you get more uh, efficient at finding out those dimensions that you need, uh, a lot of times I've heard of people just using, uh, they offer like three sizes of window well covers and it's a generic fit and they don't even care. It's just, if you're between these dimensions, you're getting this size, these dimensions, you're getting that size, and then their, their biggest size, right? And they just push it on over there. If you want custom fit window wells, it'll take you a minute. Uh, you can charge anywhere from 150 to $200, maybe even more on the standard window well size. As you get larger and more material, you need to figure out that price and go up uh, larger.